Hello everyone, in this video we, hello everyone, in this video we are going to look into the problem of inserting into a sorted linked list. So let's say we are given a linked list which is sorted and we want to insert a new node such that after insertion also the list remains sorted. So there are two three possibilities. One possibility is that we may end up inserting at the head of the list. Another possibility is that we, if we are inserting a larger value then we may end up inserting at the tail of the list. Or the third possibility is that if we are inserting in a value, then we may end up inserting in between. Now, all of these scenarios are important because one, they will give us the test cases uh, which we will use to test our code. And second, you know, we will make sure that our code is running uh, fine for the boundary conditions. So if we are inserting three, then three will become the first node. If three becomes the first node, then next of three will be five. It also means that the head pointer will change. So when we are writing a signature of the function and if we are using a language like C language where we are accepting the head pointer then we should be returning the head pointer because the head pointer is changing. If the head pointer is part of the uh, is, is part of the class itself then then also we should consciously change the head pointer. So this function has a potential of changing the head pointer. I am just calling it out so that we know we you know we are conscious about it we know, know it. Second is if we are inserting a node in between. So let's say if you are inserting a value 8, then 8 will come between 7 and 10. Which means that next of 8 will be 10 and next of 7 will be 8 and this link will be broken. The third scenario is when we are inserting a node at the end of the list. So if we are inserting a value, let's say 20, then 20 will be the last node in the list. In which case the next of 20 will be null and next of 12 will hold the address of this new node 20. In all the three cases and in all other cases because we are inserting a node we will be creating a node. So let's say we create a node like node temp is equal to new node with value. Let's assume that we have a node class and the constructor of the node class creates a, no a node uh, where data is equal to value and next is null. So in this case temp is pointing here in this case temp is pointing here and in this case temp is pointing here so let's call these three different scenarios as one two and three now whenever we are writing code we should also test our code against the boundary conditions one of the boundary condition here is what if the list is empty so if list is empty it means that head is null so that becomes the fourth scenario that we will check our code against so fourth scenario is when head is null so if head is null then for this particular case also our uh, our code should be working fine in all the cases we will end up creating a new node so let's say when i say node temp is equal to new node then a new node gets created and temp is holding the address of that node in the first case where temp becomes the head in that case we will say that temp dot next is equal to head and head is equal to temp so this is the first case again i am assuming the syntax of java where we are using the dot pointer if you are using c plus plus then you can use arrow pointer that is irrelevant now let's assume the second case in the second case first of all we will have to reach to a point after which we want to insert this temp. So we have to reach to this node 7 after which we will be inserting the new node. So once we reach this point, let's say h is holding the address of this point. So when we reach this point, after that we will say temp.next is equal to h.next and h.next is equal to temp. So first we make uh, uh, h dot next. First we store the address of h dot next in temp in the next of temp, so that we don't lose the rest of the list. And then we change the pointer, uh, the next pointer of h. All right. This is the second case. Then comes the third case. In the third case, we need a pointer to the last node, h. So we need to move our pointer to the last node. Once the pointer reaches here, then we simply need to say that temp h dot next is equal to temp. 
now if you notice that in these two cases we are doing the exact same thing s dot next is equal to temp s dot next is equal to temp in second we are doing one thing extra which is temp dot next is equal to h dot next so temp dot next is h dot next h dot next is null so even if we do the same thing here it it will not make a difference so maybe the second and third code can be same so second code of second will work for third also and if we look at the fourth scenario then fourth scenario is simple we just say head is equal to temp so if you observe then this fourth scenario and the first scenario can be same because if head is null then setting the temp dot next to head will not make much of a difference all right so we'll club one and four and two and three so we'll club one and four together and we'll club two and three together in in both two and three we need to move a pointer and we need a pointer to the node after which we are inserting the value so i've just shifted this uh, three and four conditions near one and two which indicate that you know one and two are same and sorry one and four are same and two and three are same now let's write the signature of the function the signature of the function will be node insert sorted node h integer value we are assuming that the list is sorted first of all we will create a new node node temp is equal to new node with value here again we are assuming that we have a node class and that class has a constructor also which accepts integer value and that constructor uh, will assign the data to value and next to null now after this we will handle the first and four condition so if h is equal to null or the data at head is greater than value so if either the head is null or the data that we are trying to insert is less than the first node itself which means that in both the cases we are inserting at the head so in both the cases we'll say temp dot next is equal to head and head is equal to temp so this is the this is uh, we, are, we are handling the first and second case here at the end we will just return h now comes the second and third case in both the cases two and three we need to move the edge forward so we can't move the edge forward because we are returning it at the end so we'll create a temporary head okay so let's call it h2 this is equal to h now we'll move this h2 forward as long as the data at h uh, the next node is less than the value that we are trying to insert so while h two dot next dot data is less than value remember we are not comparing the data of the node we are comparing the data of the next node because if we want to insert eight then <clears throat> we should keep moving h forward unless the next until the next node has a value which is greater than eight so if we have seven and let's say seven point five in between then seven point five will be the node after which we will insert eight similarly we'll keep on moving h forward as long as <coughs> we have a next node or the data at the next node is less than this now this code will crash this code will crash if we try to run this while loop for 20 because uh, there you know this condition that h dot next dot data is less than value is never false because it is never false so it will keep on moving forward and there will come a point when x h dot next is null and when we try to access data at node then it will crash so we sh we need to handle both of them so there should be a node h2 dot next which means that h2 dot next is not equal to null and the data of that node should be less than value so as long as these two conditions are true we will say h2 is equal to h2 dot next now please understand in the first case when we are trying to insert 8 h2 will be here and then we'll compare 7 is less than 8 so move h2 forward so h2 will come here then in this case we'll compare the next node next element 10 is less than 8 no so h2 will remain here and if you are trying to insert 20 then we will start with the head node so initially h2 is at 5 and we will compare the data of the next node we are not comparing the data of the current node 7 is less than 20 yes move h2 forward 10 is less than 20 yes move h2 forward 12 is less than 20 yes 
move as to forward there is no next node so if there is no next node then we stop right so we either stop when h2 dot next is null or we stop when the data of the next node becomes greater than the data of the value in both the cases we will be inserting the new node uh, we will be inserting this temp node just after h2 so the logic will be the logic will be this one so temp dot next is h dot next and then h dot next is temp so we can divide the code in multiple parts so this is let's say part a this is part b this is part c this is part d in a we are constructing the node so this is a we are creating the new node with a value in b we are handling a situation where either the head is null which means that there is no the link list is empty or we are inserting at the head so this entire thing is b in c we are just moving the head pointer forward so that we know the point after which we want to insert so c is one part of these two and d is where the actual insertion is happening for two and three so basically this two and three is combination of c and d and then we are returning the returning the head because the there is a chance that head may change all right if you look at the time complexity then time complexity of this code is on the order of n because in the worst case we end up traversing the entire list once right in the best case when we are inserting at the head then the time complexity is constant and the extra space being used is also constant so the point here is not that this code is complex right the code for inserting in a linked list in a sorted linked list is very simple the point that i want to make is that you know when you are in an interview you should be very conscious about the boundary conditions maybe you know your approach should be more methodical in the sense that uh, you know first you have the test cases in your mind you should have you should be having all the conditions in your mind you should be you know you so you should think it from the qa point of view from breaking it point of view so whenever you are implementing a code think of it that you know what are the total conditions what are what is the sum total of all the conditions that this code should be uh, should be facing what what is the sum total of all the situations that this code is facing and we sh our code should be capable enough of handling all of the, all of those situations the signature of the function is very important the return type of the function is very important the uh, you know whether we are using a recursive function call or a non recursive function call that decision is also important uh, ideally we should be avoiding recursion because that takes little more time and more memory because there will be multiple stack frames in the memory then we should be handling all the corner cases and companies expect so when you are appearing in an interview companies expect that your code is production ready which means that you your code should not have even a semicolon mistake so this is what the expectation of uh, uh, company is when you are writing code in an interview all right so this is it for this particular problem for more such videos please keep visiting this channel or you know uh, please subscribe to this channel and you may hit the bell icon thank you